Welcome back everyone to this section of the course where we're going to be focusing on vector embeddings and how I can use them for RAG. RAG stands for Retrieval Augmented Generation and it makes great use of the model's ability to generate vector embeddings of text. It's a simple idea but a very clever one. I want to explore the idea of RAG with a motivational thought experiment. While we know that Google Gemini is a very powerful model, there's simply going to be content it doesn't know about either very recent events or just stuff that wasn't in its training data. For example, Google Gemini probably doesn't know about the vacation policies at a specific company. But what if I want to build an AI that's basically a corporate HR assistant that can interact programmatically with all the employees at this company to answer HR related questions? How would I be able to augment Google Gemini's powerful large language model tooling to actually understand context specific to my company? What I need to do is augment Gemini by providing the model of extra context when asking a question. For example, if I could actually provide the text about a corporate vacation policy along with our query, then Gemini could read that text and give us a reasonable answer. So for example, if I just went with base Gemini and I asked it, how many weeks off do employees of Acme Core get? And I sent that over to Gemini, Acme Core is just a company that Gemini doesn't really know about. Here, you could replace this with something like Salesforce or Microsoft, etc. But most likely, you're going to get just the default answer. It can't answer questions about how many weeks off employees get at a specific corporation. It doesn't have access to internal HR information for specific companies. And maybe it just tries to generalize and offer just general information about vacation policies in the United States or other countries. How can I actually improve on this by augmenting what I'm actually providing to Gemini? Well, the whole idea behind augmented generation is that not only do you have your original query, like how many weeks off do employees of Acme Core get, I'm also going to provide some additional context. I'm going to augment my actual query here with whatever content is relevant. So in this case, it'd be great if I could just pull the documents from the HR department at Acme that happen to relate with you know weeks off uh, during the year or vacation policy. And if I take all of this together and feed that into Gemini, then it will be able to understand the context here. This is basically just one large string of text to Gemini and it'll read it and they'll say something like, according to the HR vacation policy documents, employees receive three weeks of vacation per year with one additional day per year of the company. So we can see that large language models can answer pretty much any question as long as they have the correct and appropriate context and documents that relate for the answer. And this is the part of augmented generation because we augmented the original query with the context of the Acme HR policy documents. But remember, it's RAG, not just AG. So how do we retrieve this context to perform full retrieval augmented generation? Recall our model's ability to embed text into vectors. If we had all our text documents stored as vectors and matched the original text, we could perform a vector similarity search to find the most relevant documents. Remember back to our very first discussion of how large language models work. Part of the process of this large language model is to actually create these vector embeddings from text. So we're gonna focus on this to understand the full RAG process. So how does the RAG process actually work? The way it works is you have a user and they ask a query. For example, they ask about the vacation policy at the company. Then we're going to take that query and we're actually going to take that query and embed it into a vector representation. So we take the text query of the user and before we even send it to Gemini's large language model, we send it to an embedding model. And so now I have both the original query text and the embedded vector representation. I've also taken my set of documents, such as all my internal documentation about HR, and I've vectorized those as well. This is known as a vector store. Basically, I have the embedded vector representation of every relevant document. So I match both text and the vector embedding. So now I have the vector embedding of my query, as well as my vector store of all the vector embeddings for just documents, let's say, inside my company. And this could be the context really of anything. If you wanted to, maybe you have a vector embedding of all of Wikipedia because you're trying to answer questions factually. So now that I have these vector embeddings, both of my query and of my related documents, what I can do is perform a similarity search. Remember, these vectors are just essentially lines in space 
In this case, it's going to be like 768 dimensions, so it's hard to visualize that. But if you think about it in terms of like a two-dimensional vector or a three-dimensional vector, you can understand that there's actually certain vectors that are closer in the space or more similar to each other than other vectors. And I can perform what's known as a cosine similarity search between these vectors to figure out the vector that is most similar to my query vector. And this is sometimes known as also semantic similarity. Basically what I'm doing here is I'm figuring out which document is most similar to the query that's being asked. And then once I perform this cosine similarity search, I'm going to isolate that document. And really what I need is not the vector embedding representation, but the document itself. And so now what I have here is the document that has the most similar content to my original query. And so I'm gonna pass in my original query with an additional context and then paste in that document. And then I'll pass it into Gemini and maybe the prompt is, what can you tell me about vacation policy? Here's some context below. And then I insert that document. So notice again, the process steps. I need to read in my documents. So I need to read them in whether they're text or PDF or PowerPoints, et cetera. Then I also need to load the embedding model I need to embed all my original documents as vectors, and then I need to store the vector embeddings. This is sometimes known as a vector store. We'll build our own just using a pandas data frame, but it should be noted that there's lots of services and lots of different libraries for more professional or high performance vector stores, especially if you have you know, hundreds of thousands of documents that you're storing. And then what we're going to do is once you have your vector store embeddings of your documents, you're gonna take in a query from the user and then you're gonna vector embed that query. Then you perform a similarity search for the vector of the query versus the vector store of your documents. You figure out, hey, what document was most similar to the query that was asked by the user? And then you paste that in to augment the text generation with the original document. You should remember that as long as you can convert a document into a text string, you should be able to then embed that string and link the connection to the original document. I should point out there exists many Python libraries specific to a document type. For example, there's PyPDF2 for PDF files. So if all your documents are PDF files, you could use the PyPDF2 to extract all the text from that. That way you can then vector embed that text and then you have a match from a vector to the text to pass along with the augmentation of the original query. I should point out there's a really cool library called unstructured and you can go to unstructured.io that can accept multiple file types. Okay, with this all being said, let's actually get some hands-on practice and explore RAG with Python in the next lecture. I'll see you there.